We've looked at some drip legs. We've talked about specifically where drip legs need to be in the system. And today we're gonna to look at how those drip legs are gonna look for different applications in the system. So how are we gonna install the drip legs? If I've got a horizontal run, one of those 200 foot interval portions, uh, I'm gonna look at my main line size. In this case, it's 10 inch. So I'm not gonna use a 10 inch drip leg, but I'm gonna use half of that diameter. Um, by having that large diameter drip leg, we're capturing that condensate effectively. Because the condensate's traveling in the system, it's not like water sitting in a sink waiting for you to pull the plug. It's more like the water on your windshield when you're driving on the highway. It's being smeared, pushed down that pipe, and so we have to have a certain cross section for that condensate to fall into. So in this case, we would come directly off the bottom of the header, we would tee out the side with our trap, and we always wanna put a drain on that as well. For system startup, we can open that drain, clear condensate for troubleshooting, et cetera. There's some additional piping associated with the trap. We'll look at that next week. If we've got an elevation, a steam line coming this way, that condensate's not gonna to wanna to go up. So we'll typically just put in a full size T and come down and once again, out sideways to the trap uh, with the drain line. And because this mains a four inch, uh, it's gonna continue in four inch and my drip leg's gonna be four inch. In this instance, we're taking a drop off to a piece of equipment. Um, one tendency is when somebody's making a drop to a piece of equipment is to pull off the bottom of the steam line because it requires the least amount of fittings and welds. But you can see from this example, that's how you put a drip leg on a main. So if we pull off the bottom of the pipe, we're going to get all the condensate because we're creating a drip leg, but it's gonna go into our equipment. So we wanna pull off the top of the pipe over a 90 down to our equipment. And because that equipment's gonna have some sort of isolation or control valve, we're gonna have a trap down there to keep that header clear. And here we also show our end of main drip leg. So that main running down to the end of the plant, maybe we're gonna add something down there later. Um, it doesn't matter, we can't allow condensate to accumulate in there. It's gonna cause problems and corrosion. So we'll drop with a 90 if we want to. We can use a T and put an air vent on there if we want, um, come out the side to our trap. So those are different examples of how we would pipe those drip legs in. So we've got a drip leg component and we've got a trap component. The size for drip legs, we've got a pretty simple chart here. It makes it simple. Um, anything under four inches, we wanna do a full size drip leg. Over and over again, I will see a three quarter inch weld alet in the bottom of a, of a four inch pipe that's supposed to be a drip leg. And the problem is, with the velocity and smearing of the condensate through, down that pipe, it's not gonna go into that weld outlet. A weld outlet will only remove literal standing water in the pipe, and that's not accomplishing our goals. So we use a full-size T um, to drop down and a full-size um, diameter drop for collection of the condensate. If we're larger than a four-inch main, we're going to use four-inch um, for our drip leg up to eight inch pipe. So basically that's half um, until we get to eight inch. Above an eight inch main, um, we're gonna use half inch of the main diameter. So if we have a 12 inch main, a six inch drip leg, a eight inch main, a four inch drip leg, um, a two inch main, a two inch drip leg. You know, the, really the cost in piping is the labor. So if we go ahead and make those drip legs full size um, or as large as practical, then we're gonna get good condensate removal at those points. <laughs>